We're going to talk about the unit circle, uh, which is really important in developing the trigonometric functions you're going to be using. At the end of this, you're going to be able to use the unit circle to extend trigonometric functions to all real numbers using the radian measures of angles around it. The unit circle. The unit circle is defined as a circle with its center at the origin and a radius of 1. Everywhere on the circle is exactly a distance of 1 from the center. The equation of the circle from geometry would be x squared plus y squared equals 1 for any point on the circle. All points must satisfy this equation. So let's pick a point on the circle. Let's say we have an x value of a half. Well, if x is a half, what's the y value? And as you can see, there's actually two of them. There's two places where x is a half on this unit circle is going to be a point on the circle. So if we put a half into the equation for x and solve for y and do a little bit of algebra, we're going to get y squared equals 3 fourths. When we take the square root, we get y equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. So those two points are actually at 1 half square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half negative square root of 3 over 2. So we're going to look at a larger version of this and make a right triangle out of it. Good old Sokotoa and trigonometric properties apply to it. And here's a right triangle with, with a vertex at the origin and another point at 1 half square root of 3 over 2. And we know all the sides of this triangle through trigonometry. The bottom leg is just the x value of the point. The other leg is just the y value. And the hypotenuse is always equal to 1 because we, that's how we've defined the unit circle. And if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, then the sine of this angle theta that's formed by this initial and terminal sides is square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 because it has an opposite of square root of 3 over 2, a hypotenuse of 1. Similarly, the cosine adjacent over hypotenuse is going to be 1 half over 1, or 1 half. Notice, because that hypotenuse is 1, the sine is just the, winds up being the y coordinate and the cosine winds up being the x coordinate. Now, if we talk about the tangent, you'll recall that the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. And what happens here is we get the square root of 3. So the tangent of that angle is the square root of 3. We can create a trig function for any angle theta whose terminal side has a point on the unit circle. And for this, the y value is always going to be the sine. The x value is always going to be the cosine and y over x is going to wind up being the tangent. So let's take this angle theta. The sine of theta is going to be the y coordinate, the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of theta is going to be the x coordinate, which in this case is negative because we're moving left on the x axis. It's negative square root of 2 over 2. And finally, the tangent is going to be y divided by x, opposite over adjacent. It's going to be square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2, which gives you a value of negative 1. So here we have defined three trig values for this angle using the unit circle. And if we divide the unit circle into pieces and learn the point values of some of the important points on there, that'll help us memorize some important values of the trig functions. So here we've carved up the unit circle into eight pieces, angle size of one of those divisions. 45 degrees, that's right, 360 divided by 8, or in radians, that's going to wind up being pi over 4. And we can label this all the way around at 45 degree or pi over 4 increments. And we can find those values for the x and y coordinates, which wind up being the cosine and sine, respectively. So now we found all the way around the unit circle the values for the sine and cosine. Sine of 225 degrees, for example, would have would be down here and have a value of negative square root of 2 over 2. And these are pretty easy to memorize. Also note the quadrantal angles are all here because there are multiples of 45 degrees. Notice at 90 degrees the cosine is 0 and the sine is 1. At 0 degrees the cosine is 1 and the sine is 0. And as we've said these are going to be increments of pi over 4 because 45 degrees, its equivalent of radians is pi over 4. So if we increase each of these angles by pi over 4, that's kind of the wheel of pi over 4 there. Pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and so on. So the sine of 7 pi over 4 would be a quadrant 4 angle here, and its value would be negative square root of 2 over 2. 
the cosine of 7 pi over 4 would be square root of 2 over 2. Well, what if we divided the unit circle into 12 pieces instead? How many degrees would be in each piece? Because if you divide 360 up into 12 pieces, you're going to get 30. And if we similarly labeled and worked out the right triangles for all of those, you're going to wind up with the sine and cosine functions for each of those angles as well. All using the unit circle where the hypotenuse is always going to be 1. So the cosine of 330 degrees would be a quadrant 4 angle and would have a value of the square root of 3 over 2. The sine, incidentally, would be negative 1 half. Sine of 240 degrees, we'd look at the y coordinate at 240. It's negative the square root of 3 over 2. And we're going to talk more about some definite patterns that are going to help you remember these. So putting it all together, here are the values of 30, 60, 90, and all 30 degree increments around the unit circle. And what would 30 degrees be in radians? It's still pi halfway around the circle, and if we divided that up into its six pieces and half the circle, each of the pieces is going to be 30 degrees and pi over 6 radians. This is a really important depiction of the unit circle and the angles at 30, 45, 60, and 90, and all the similar increments around the unit circle. It's going to be very helpful to memorize these, especially from 0 to 90, plus the quadrantal angles.